I firmly believe that everybody on this planet has a gift. It's your job to figure out what that gift is. Then it becomes your job to decide whether you're going to act on that or not. Everyone sees the work that you put in, but it's what you don't see is going to determine how far you're going to get. Action is what builds confidence. It doesn't start with belief. The real way, the real way for most of us is not to wait to believe, but to push ourselves to act and through the action you will build the belief. All the time people say, "Oh, look in the mirror and you'll see why you're not succeeding." I don't believe that. It's what you don't see in the mirror that's what's holding you back. It's what you're not willing to see is why talent is not enough. And when you when you finally see it and accept it and decide to work on it, then you can take that next level. But if you are constantly looking outside of yourself and you don't latch on to your gift, you will never find your purpose. If you want to succeed, you must commit to your own gift and embrace it. Now this is how you know you're not living in your gift. If when the alarm clock goes off in the morning and you ain't happy about it, you ain't doing what you want to do. See, you fighting upstream. You going against what God created you for. If your job makes you sick to go to, if you're unhappy with waking up to go to where you got to go, it's because you ain't living in your gift. Some people are born to be teachers, caregivers, nurses, babysitters. Those are gifts. If you're living in your gift, you're cool. It's just if you ain't. If like if you fry chicken better than everybody else. You should be somewhere frying chicken. If you do hair better than everybody else. You should be somewhere doing somebody's hair. Those are gifts. Telling jokes was a gift. They just not just running jumping. If you paint, you should be painting. If babysitting is what you really do, you should be babysitting. You doing anything? If you fix cars, you work with your hands. You supposed to be working with your hands. You do anything else when that alarm clock go off in the morning, you ain't gonna like it. Now, if you waking up, you going down there, they ain't paying you what you want. You hate your coworkers. You down there. Your boss has no business being your boss. I just know. I just never thought that anybody should be in charge of me. I always saw myself free. I just want to come to work. This is all I want to do. Bishop Jake said this. That I would hate to die and never do the thing I was born to do. You should look into that before you mess around and check out of here. I think everyone can always, you know. Brush up on their technique. It is, you know, what we do is、uh, takes a lot of research. It take, I mean, if you really want to inhabit a role, it takes a it takes a lot of work and training. And I think it's incredibly important to constantly, no matter what, how how successful you are, it's incredibly important. I always believe that natural talent can can take you so far. But I think you need to have the work ethic and the drive to to achieve your potential.、Um, I mean, I'd say you know my my natural talent you know probably brought me 50 percent of the way.、Um, but then after that, it was all it was all down to the work that I've done and and the volume of work that I've done over the you know the last 15 years. You know when I really started to take golf seriously and you know thought about you know making this a career. What one thing we fail to do in the educational system is alert people that if you're doing what no one has done before,、mm -hmm. stuff goes wrong. And in fact, if nothing ever goes wrong in what you're doing, if you make no mistakes in your job, in your in whatever task you've brought upon yourself, then you are not on the frontier. Simple.、Mm -hmm. It, it's true in science, and I heard it applied to car racing.、Uh, there's a quote that I'm, I'm told, spoken by Mario Andretti. He said, "If you are in complete control of your car, you're not in the race." <laughs>、mm -hmm. Oh wow! <laughs> there's something that、yeah. you're just not completely in control of, that, and only then can. And that's the same thing I'm describing、mm -hmm. for when you are on the frontier. We've been getting a ton of questions about being paralyzed with the fear of what other people think, and this is so commonplace. I think every human being on the planet is is paralyzed in some aspect or some area of their life because they're. 
concerned about with their parents or with their friends or with their friends on Facebook or with their colleagues or with their upline or their downline or whatever, what their neighbors are gonna think. If you are struggling with this and you have not found it helpful to attack your thinking patterns, then here's a trick that I want you to try to break the pattern of being paralyzed by what other people think. I want you to pick one thing, one thing that you've been wanting to do, that you've been thinking about, but you have stopped yourself from doing because you're concerned about what other people think. Let me give you some examples. Maybe you've wanted to go on a wellness retreat, but you think your spouse will roll their eyes at you, so you haven't done it. Maybe you have a particular Facebook post or a blog. So many of you want to start a business or start creating art, but you're terrified of putting yourself out there because of what other people will think. Today, we're going to break that pattern. What you're going to do is you're going to pick one thing you've been stopping yourself from doing and you're going to do it. You're going to do it. And the reason why I want you to do this is because I know that if you're still paralyzed, you have not been able to change your thinking patterns yet. That's cool. No problem. We're going to try a different tactic. I want you to change this paralysis through action because if you sign up for that class if you go on that retreat if you create your art if you post that blog post if you start that business you will be proving to yourself through the actions that you're taking that you don't care what other people think try that today let me know number one what you've stopped yourself from doing and number two what you're committing to doing today because one way to break this is to attack the thoughts and change the thoughts and get into action first the other way to do it is to recognize that you're paralyzed pick one thing that you're going to do and actually get it done persevere nothing worthwhile is easy no one of achievement has avoided failure sometimes catastrophic failures but they keep at it they learn from mistakes they they don't quit you know, when I first arrived on this campus, it was we had little money, fewer options. But it was here that I tried to find my place in this world. I knew I wanted to make a difference, but it was vague how, in fact, I'd go about it. I, I, but, I, but I wanted to do my part to shape uh, a better world. So even as I worked after graduation, a few unfulfilling jobs here in New York, I will not list them all. <laughs> Even as I uh, went from uh, motley apartment to motley apartment, I reached out and I, I started to write letters to community organizations all across the country. And one day, a small group of churches on the south side of Chicago answered, offering me work with people in neighborhoods hit hard by steel mills that were shutting down. And, and communities where jobs were dying, dying away. The community had been plagued by gang violence, so as, once I arrived, one of the first things we tried to do was to mobilize a meeting with community leaders to deal with gangs. And I'd worked for weeks on this project. We invited the police, we made phone calls, we went to churches, we passed out flyers. The night of the meeting, we arranged rows and rows of chairs in anticipation of this crowd, and we waited, and we waited, and finally, a group of older folks walked into the hall and they sat down and this little old lady raised her hand and asked, is this where the bingo game is? <laughs> it was a disaster. Nobody showed up. My first big community meeting, nobody showed up. And, and later, the, the volunteers I worked with uh, told me, that's it, we're quitting. They had been doing this for two years, even before I had arrived. They had nothing to show for it. And I'll be honest, I felt pretty discouraged as well. I didn't know what I was doing. I thought about quitting. And as we were talking, I looked outside and I saw some young boys playing in a vacant lot across the street. And they were just throwing rocks up at a boarded building. They had nothing better to do. Late at night, just throwing rocks. I said to the volunteers, before you quit, answer one question. What will happen to those boys if you quit? Who will fight for them if we don't? Who will give them a fair shot if we leave? And one by one, the volunteers decided not to quit. 
We went back to those neighborhoods and we kept at it. We registered new voters and we set up after school programs and we fought for new jobs, helped people live lives with some measure of dignity. And we sustained ourselves with those small victories. We didn't set the world on fire. Some of those communities are still very poor. There's still a lot of gangs out there. But I believe that it was those small victories that helped me win the bigger victories of my last three and a half years as president. Can I tell you, your dream is not dead. It's just not in season. Your time is coming. The right people, the right breaks, favor, restoration, vindication, that's what's headed your way. These light afflictions are for a moment. It goes on to say, they work in us an eternal weight of glory. In other words, the adversity is temporary. The glory is eternal. Friends, stir up what God's put on the inside. You may have a dream that you bury. You need to get your shovel out and start thanking God that it's still coming to pass. Perhaps you're on a detour right now. Something you don't understand. Don't get discouraged. It's temporary. You're just passing through. It's easy to remember the hurt, the disappointment, the failure. I'm asking you to remember your dream. Remember what God's promised you. If you'll do this, I believe and declare dreams that you buried are about to come back to life. Promises you've given up on are being resurrected. Like Joseph, God is going to turn every stumbling block into a stepping stone. You're going to rise higher, accomplish your goals, and become everything you were created to be in Jesus' name. If you receive it, can you say amen today? We never like to close our broadcast without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Would you pray with me? Just say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Friends, if you prayed that simple prayer, we believe you got born again. Get in a good Bible-based church. Keep God first place. He's going to take you places that you've never dreamed.